One of the most frustrating things for me as a shooter is I'm trying to improve is when you have everything done as best as you know how. You're in a good position. It's a known yardage. The wind is dead. You know, you have the bullseye dead center in your crosshairs. You have a perfect trigger squeeze. Your heart rate is out of the way. You shoot it and you miss. It's yeah. so frustrating because I want to improve as a shooter, but I could burn barrels all day long and I'm not going to get any better until I know what I'm doing wrong. So one of those invisible factors uh, that you may not be noticing when you're shooting that can cause significant errors in your shooting is the cant of the rifle, the tilt left and right as you're holding it. You shoulder the gun and are you perfectly up and down? Uh, there's some wiggle room there for what you may consider to be feel straight. Right. And it's actually really hard to get hard data on how much of an error that can cause if you're off by one, three degrees. Um, it's very difficult. I, I looked at a, a white paper by Lyman Hazelton who mm -hmm. did the physics and calculus behind this and I was like, I have no idea how to even apply this number to find out what it's doing to me. And so I turned to this guy. All right, so, <laughs> so I took his white paper, I took the model that he created, and I applied that across several different calibers, several different um, rounds of ammunition, uh, just to figure out what kind of impact we would get. And so here's a couple of interesting numbers for you. If you're shooting a 308 at 1,000 yards, uh, so long shots, this is where it's gonna really impact it, um, if you're off by just one degree, that's like not even perceptible. One degree, you're going to be off by eight and three quarters inches at the target. That's incredible. That's the I error. Mean, I mean, that's at a thousand yards, but one degree, one degree is going to put you off eight inches. Now get this, if you're off by five degrees, which is perceptible, but an error that a shooter common. could totally make. Yeah. 44 inches. That's over you're not three even close and to a the half plate anymore. feet. You totally miss the animal. Oh yeah. Right? if you're hunting in this kind of a scenario. Which a thousand yards, but people do it. <laughs> I know, people do it. If you're shooting a 28 nozzler, um, one degree off, you're gonna hit, you're gonna miss by 6.4 inches. Much less flatter right. shooting. Flatter shooting, higher velocity. Um, if you're off by five degrees, still 32 inches. It's a big over deal. two and a half feet. Um, it is a big deal. At, you know, at 300 yards, I mean, really the distance makes a huge impact. Mm -hmm. um, and so at 300 yards, you know, if you're off by, one degree, you're gonna, with a 308, you're gonna be within an inch of the target. Uh, if you're off by five degrees, the error cuts down to four inches. So you can see how it's not linear, right? Mm -hmm. Going from 300 yards to 1,000 yards, it's substantial. So exactly. if you're wondering why when you're doing these long range shots, like, I'm doing everything right. Mm -hmm. I'm shooting exactly the same way I do at 300 yards. I'm accounting for the distance. How am I missing so widely? Can't might be what's to blame. So let's talk about why exactly the error exists. So the scope is higher than the bore of the rifle. Obviously, we're not looking through the bore when we're shooting, right? And so imagine this, that, you know, your bullet is really lobbed at the target to get right. there, right? Which means that your scope and your barrel aren't perfectly parallel. Right. If we exaggerate it, the barrel has to be tilted upward slightly compared to the scope. Or the scope down either way, right. but they have to be tighter at the front so that you can do Absolutely. that, right? So, um, so if you're doing this, um, then at, if we have canted and then that bullet is doing this lob trajectory, it's still that same shape, but now look what happens because we are off that same, off the axis. Exactly, so line of sight is a straight line, mm -hmm. right? Your scope is like pointing a laser right at your target. Your mm -hmm. scope's looking straight, the bullet's lobbing, and now the scope is on top and tilted to the side and the barrel's pointed upward. And so because that bullet has to lob, it just, it, it makes it so that, you know, over a course of a distance, as gravity is able to work on that, um, pulling the bullet downward, it just has a greater and greater impact, um, depending again on how much time gravity has to work on yeah, that Yeah, and it hurt my brain. I had to think <laughs> about this a little bit because I was picturing it like if you have a bore sight through the barrel and we're looking straight through here, I mean, that laser is going to be rotating this much right. at whatever distance. But it's the lobbing that, cause, that causes the issue. Right, exactly. Uh, that it's not a perfectly flat trajectory. So that's what is causing these cant errors. And what's interesting about that too is that because of how it's the lobbing that impacts it, it, it end, it's weird how this happens. But the error isn't vertical error. Mm. The vertical error, even at a thousand yards, 
in most of these cases is one inch at a thousand yards, even if you're off by five degrees. So, so when you say vertical error, you mean you're not bullseyes be, here, you're gonna be within you're gonna two be within inches an inch up or two and down. Here. Yeah. But it, where you get that huge error is in the windage, the side to side, that horizontal error, mm -hmm. um, where you're off by two, three, four feet in some cases, it's crazy. Okay, so let's talk about how, what degree, I mean, so I hear that five degree and I'm like, okay, is that something I could be doing or not? <laughs> um, so we'll show you some B-roll here. You can see the video uh, where we're tracking it just with an iPhone to give you an idea of how much. But essentially, an error of up to three inches or three you're, degrees. You're yeah. three degrees. You're definitely making that. At least I am. You're Maybe right. you're a way better shooter than me, but like when I hold the rifle, like if I just close my eyes and I don't pay attention to this bubble level that I have, like almost every time when I open my eyes, I'm off. It, it's not perfect. So one to three degrees, very, no very easy to make. A five degree error, I feel like, yes, I definitely make that too, but only if I'm not paying attention right. to it. If I'm thinking can't and I'm trying, I look through the crosshairs and I'm like, mm, that's not quite straight and I try to straighten things up, I've, I'm gonna be within under five degrees. Absolutely, yeah. So that'll give you a perspective of how common this is. I, I, you'd have to be really skilled, a lot better than me for sure, uh, to just have it, to never be within two degrees off either way. Yeah. You, it's very common. So let's talk about the factors that impact mm -hmm. because we just said that a 308 and a 28 nozzle are going to give you two sort of different, actually pretty radically different errors. Um, and depending on what you're shooting, that error could be even more radically different. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we took this and we applied it to archery, right? So first case, like... Much slower. What happened? Yeah, speed is that first one. How fast are you shooting? You're shooting a rifle, you're shooting very, very fast. And this is where you get the difference between that 28 nozzle and 3,000 feet per second. Right. <laughs> and archery's, you know, 300 feet exactly. per second. Exactly. Well, and so like with the 28 nozzle versus a 308, that 28 nozzle is shooting faster. Mm -hmm. And what's happening here is like the amount of lob has to do um, in large part to how much time gravity has to pull down, right? Mm -hmm. Gravity is time influenced. So if you're shooting slower than over a thousand yards, gravity has more time mm -hmm. to work on that bullet with an arrow where you're shooting it at a tenth the speed, right? Um, we're talking about gravity having substantially more time. So at 60 yards, just 60 yards, um, a one degree cant with a bow, you're gonna be off by over an inch. Just at 60 yards and a five degree cant, you're gonna be off by six inches at 60 yards. I mean, that could mean totally missing the critical vital area of an animal. Um, because you're tilting your bow five degrees. Yeah, so when we did that, what I noticed when shooting a bow is because it's so tall, you're, you're a little bit less likely to be off by five degrees. Yes. A, a rifle, it's easier to make that mistake. Yes. Um, but again, a one or two degrees, yes. And again, it's it's pretty small. And at, at 60 yards, at 30 it's yards. pretty small. It's not like a huge difference here, but if you're shooting for real accuracy, right. you should think about it at least. And where we talked about how the distance, I mean, it's not linear, right? The more time that passes, the more the lob is and, and like increasingly more, right? It's an exponential sort of a thing. So at 30 yards, we should, like tried this out. We're like, let's tilt the bow like as far as we can. Mm -hmm. The grouping was still, I mean, you couldn't tell a difference at 30 yards, no problem. And so for archery, it's probably not going to be a big deal unless you're a competitive archer. Yep. Okay, so that's speed is the, is the first, first factor. The next factor is distance, as we've mentioned. Uh, one that I'm curious about here, though, is handguns. Right. Because they're shooting fast, but it's a very short distance. Right. Um, and so I was curious how much it's really going to make a difference. And what we really found is just don't worry about this <laughs> if you're shooting a handgun. If you're off by five degrees and still using the sights... I mean, you're at, almost gangsta right. at five degrees. Right. If you're off... <laughs> Gangsta is more like 90, but okay. Even at, so, if you're off by five degrees um, and you are like Depend, using the site, depends what gang you're from. Yeah, I guess. I mean, <laughs> and if you are using the site, you're, I mean, the error at 60 yards is like a third of an inch. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just not substantial because you're still shooting at those high speeds um, closer to a rifle, but and over a much shorter distance. The site is closer to the bore. Right. And that's the third one, right? Mm -hmm. The third factor that impacts this is the distance between the center of the bore and the center of the scope. Okay, so the reason I, I, I wanted you to run the numbers on this yeah. is because every time you watch a scope mounting video, 
like on YouTube, there will be a dozen comments like, you idiot, you used the wrong height of rings and there's too much a difference between the scope and the bore, which does exacerbate the problem, right? The higher this is, the more the error is from the bore. Um, and so you wanna keep this as a pretty appropriate distance right here between the scope and, and the barrel. You don't want them to contact each other, but you wanna minimize that error. And so I wanted to know how much of a difference it makes, so. Yeah, at a thousand yards, five degree cant, um, a little over a 20th of an inch. If we've gone if up we, an oh, extra sorry. half inch. If we go up an extra half inch. It's just not substantial at this point. Now, I get it. It is the fact that we're not looking down the bore and the fact that the bullet's lobbing that causes this whole issue in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, but really, like, the, the extra half an inch, I mean, going from medium rings to high rings uh -huh. is going to make almost no difference. That was surprising to me because when you ran that, I was like, there's no way that's right. Yeah. Like, if the whole entirety of the error is caused by this, surely going up an extra half inch would significantly change it. But uh, you ran those numbers multiple times and yeah. that's, just, that's just how it is. Well, and as we it's think just about it. Because there is the error. So really when you're picking scope rings, pick the ones that put the scope in the right place <laughs> for your face, right? Yeah, so if you put the wrong size rings on there just to try to have it as close to the bore as possible, but now you have to like crane your neck in a funny way, it's gonna have a much bigger impact on your shooting. Yeah, get rings that are comfortable to shoot with. It is not going to make a significant yeah. impact on this. So that was that was really cool. So in the marketing, I guess, or whatever this video, we talked about a $10 device that just fixes this error. It's a dang bubble level yeah. uh, on top. Uh, this one, these are uh, these rings are from Tally, and they make as a as a different product. You buy the normal rings, and then you can buy this anti cant device, uh, which is just a replacement of the top ring, and then it has a little bubble level in there. What we found is that if you if you're halfway over on the bubble on this one, you're you know within two to three degrees off. If it's pegged, you're five or more degrees off. And so it's actually pretty good for getting very, very close on your, on your bubble level. Um, and after pulling these numbers, it's something that I'm just gonna develop yeah. into my shooting routine. I'm just gonna take that quick peek over the scope real quick and make sure I'm level before each shot. Exactly. I'm hoping the need decreases over time. Um, that I eventually will just get to the point that I'm comfortable shooting straight. But what I've, at least for me, I make that error almost every time I shoot just now that I'm checking. Just a couple degrees. Yep. And just, I mean, in the description, we're gonna link to a couple um, on Amazon, even if you're not using tally rings, just aftermarket ones that you can add on. Uh, but I, I feel like after seeing the numbers you ran, I thought it was really cool. You, you should be checking it. It's pretty cool. So that is Cant on your rifle. Hopefully this video has been helpful. If it was, give us a subscribe so you can see all the other cool stuff that we're doing and putting out for you. They'll just come across your YouTube feed as we're making stuff.